Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video we're going to review the MC Wayfinder. This board is only available in 153. This board features Mervin's C2E camper profile, which is an elliptical camper profile, meaning smaller reverse section between the feet and longer camber zones underfoot out towards the tip and the tail. Basically, you're going to get independent camber zones, but you're still going to get that play of reverse camber between the feet. I rode this board at Copper Mountain after about a foot of fresh snow had come through. There were colder temps, skies were a little overcast, but there was Bluebird coming in. You know, powder groomers on the main runs, obviously a foot or more off of it. And I rode this board with my K2 Thraxxus boots and my K2 Indy bindings. Look at it. Clearly, it is a directional flex of a board. Softer nose, progressively stiffening back up to the tail, and there is a decent amount of torsional flex to this board. The overall flex comes in a little bit on the stiffer side for a powder board. You know, it's just past middle of the road. And when we get into the stability of it, a lot of that is due in part to the width of this board. I mean, this is a really wide board. What I didn't like was that the nose tended to get a lot of chatter at high speeds and wide open terrain, and you'll feel that flapping and chatter come back under the front foot. Now, the back foot and everything seemed to be a little bit stiffer, seemed to just do better at absorbing chatter. In rutted out terrain, this board runs everything like a bank slalom, especially in tight trees and stuff like that. Like you can really get in there and just zip around and it wants to climb up and over everything. It doesn't get fucked around too much, especially when you're doing a lot of turns. It was just really wide open terrain, or if I went straight into like a powder mogul field, that it would get fucked around. All the snap of this board is derived from that rear camber zone. So you wanna make sure you load it up and you get pop. You do have to load it up. It's not crazy aggressive to load up, but you do have to load it up. It does an okay job of popping off things. I mean, it's not the snappiest board I've been on, but it's not the worst, you know, it's, it's decent. What I did like was in deeper, fresh snow, it was actually easier to load up and get that snap because that nose would float up. You've got that bend of the reverse camber so you can load it from the inside of your rear foot and just get it to rebound out and pop and get you back up on top of the snow. So this thing can pow butter. You just wanna make sure that you get your weight way out over the ends of that C2E profile, just like right where it tapers back down. You wanna make sure that you can just have everything over it to press into it. And it's still gonna fight you a little bit. You're gonna notice that there's some rebound from those camber zones. So just be prepared for it to fight you. But if you look at this board, it's really not what it's designed for. You wanna be just doing slashy turns and just going in and out of everything like it's a bank slot. Getting this board on a groomer, it rips a carb. You can really push into that rear camber zone and drive into the center of the board and get it to load and spring you out of a turn. You can do those big swoopy carbs across from one side of the run to the other, as well as tight, quick setup turns. So who's this board for? The resort powder hound, or someone that's spending a lot of time in the cat, or someone that wants to go out and race a bank slalom. This board is actually really good just getting into the squiggles and just whipping through them and everything. So when you're going through like a mogul run, if it's set up perfect, you can just zip in and out and all the way down the run with it. So this board was a dream for me because in Wide open pow, you've just got that stability of that width, unless you're going Mach 10 and hitting and chunder and shit underneath, then you notice the flap in it. But you can just swoop and carve and slash, it was a surfboard, and then getting into tight turns or trees, it ran everything like a bank slalom destroyer. Really enjoyed this board, I think it's a great offering from LipTech. Comparable boards, the Weston Backwoods, the Marhar Woodsman, the Niche Pyre. This has been my review of the LibTech MC Wayfinder. Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the content we've got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you'd really like to support us and you really want to see us grow out our content offering and our snowboard network that we're building over here, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I can tell you more here, but I've got a video over there. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefevre, and I'll see you in another video. MC stands for Mighty Contraptions.
Magic components. Major constipation. Minor conniptions. 